All right. Hello, everybody. This is Asia speaking. What's going on, guys? John over here. And we are super excited to be recording the finale of our Friendships series. Oh, we should have brought some chips right now. Uh, we ate all the chips. We already ate, <laughs> ate chips and it's like, well, I guess it's 1.16 p.m., but we were having them for like breakfast. Yeah. Um, but no judgment here. So today's episode is very special. As I said, it's our series finale of the Friendship series. But we have a very special, ho uh, not host, very special well, he is a host, but very special person here who we will be having a lovely conversation with. And he is the host of the Grateful Living podcast. And he is our pal, our new pal, Arnie. Uh, so Arnie is a mental health advocate who publishes weekly episodes to inspire you to be the best you that you can be. He also is a YouTuber sharing moments of his life through very fun and entertaining vlogs. So welcome, Arnie. Welcome. Thank you, guys. Thank you for the nice intro. No problem. We just scrapped it together real quick, but um, we'll get into your story and everything a little bit more so everyone listening here can get to know you and everything that you do, because it's a lot. You do a lot of work for the greater good. Thank you. Uh, no, quickly, before, before we jump into the episode, if you haven't already, you're listening to this episode, go back, look at the last two, the episode one, uh, part one and part two of the friendship series. Um, we discussed the importance of seeking, growing, and maintaining friendships. Um, so if you like this episode, I'm sure you're going to like the last two as well. Um, but Arnie, I mean, do you want to dive right into this or? Yeah, we can dive right into it. Let's do it up. All right. So Arnie, you obviously host a, um, you know, uh, the Grateful Living podcast. It's been, you know, very successful. I saw you just had 10,000 uh, plays in the last month. You know, congratulations. That's awesome. Thank you. Thank um, you. Yeah. Curious, how did you just uh, decide to start the Grateful Living podcast? Yeah. So it was, a, it's an interesting process. Uh, my friend uh, in March of 2019, unfortunately committed suicide. Uh, and so, you know, it was one of those things where, um, you know, w with a lot of tragedies like that, you see that uh, the response tends to always be the same, which is we mourn for that period of time. And then everybody tends to move on with life. And, you know, the, one of the interesting things about suicide is it's preventable, right? It's, it's someone taking the action. Um, you know, to take their own life. And so, you know, for me, um, you know, his life mattered and I wasn't going to let, uh, you know, life to, to go on um, as is. So, you know, I was just, you know, brainstorming throughout that year. Uh, one of the things that I had done, uh, you know, at that time, I didn't have any, you know, sort, sort of grateful living or anything like that. But basically, I just went on my personal social media and was just like, uh, if anybody wants to, uh, you know, ever talk about mental health issues or things like that, you know, I'm open to it. I've dealt with certain things myself and I'm always here, you know, and I think you guys have faced this, too, is, you know, you've become working professionals. Our time becomes limited. And uh, so we can't keep up with everyone. And, and that's maybe something we'll talk about, you know, with regards to friendship. But, you know, and, and so that's why I did. I was like, this is my call. Um, you know, anybody that wants to, um, I'm doing whatever I can in terms of, you know, putting myself out there uh, open to conversation. Then in fall of 2019, I actually entered into a part time MBA at Babson. And Babson's a big entrepreneurial school. And one of the things that they talk about is entrepreneurial action, uh, thought and action. And basically their whole thing is, you know, you, there are a lot, all these problems in the world, but look at them as opportunities to solve. And so, you know, as you know, the March of that 2020 was coming and, and the one year anniversary was coming, and, you know, I'm taking these business school courses and things like that. I, I, I looked at it and I realized, you know, there is a problem in terms of destigmatizing mental health. And so I said, you know, why don't I try to do whatever I can on my part 
So I just started out initially, it was just on my iPhone recording, you know, the first four episodes are just audio. Uh, it's just different mental health topics that I thought of that, you know, people tend to deal with like career and, and, and professional um, stress and things like that. Uh, and then I quickly realized, you know, you know, obviously I have my story, but it's just my story. And there's so many different other topics in the world, like, you know, being um, an African American in, in the US or uh, coming out uh, as a lesbian or bi, you know, these are topics that, you know, I can't speak of. And so just interviewing other people and, and, and sharing uh, authentic conversations to help others. One of the biggest regrets that I have with respect to my friend who died in, in March of 2019 was I never told him about my own issues. And, um, you know, it's one of those things where in the perfection culture of undergraduate education, you know, had I been open to him about, listen, I've dealt with suicidal thoughts and things of that nature, I'm here as a resource. And especially um, it, it fits into your friendship theme too. It, there's no telling what that could have done. And I, and it's just, it's because it's one of those things where you don't know if he had a friend that he knew of that dealt with mental health issues to the point that he dealt with it. Um, mm -hmm. And had I been open with that, you just never know what, uh, what the outcome could have been. And, you know, these are tangible, tangible uh, losses, you know, he, he, you know, he's could have lived another 60 years, might he could have been a, you know, a husband or a father. Uh, and so, you know, that that's, that's really how it started. Uh, yeah, hopefully that answers. <laughs> that's a long. No, that's yeah. really, I'm glad you gave us the whole backstory because something you actually said right there at the end is how you wonder about what if you had shared what you were experiencing um, with your friend, would that have impacted him in any way, made him feel less alone. And I think about times where I felt the most depressed or the most upset or alone. And then I happen upon a conversation with a friend and they expressed to me that they also have been feeling similar feelings. And not that that makes me feel better. Like I'm not happy that my friend is also going through shitty situations or shitty times, but it makes me feel less alone. And when we as humans, we can relate to one another, it just, it makes the human experience a little bit more manageable because life is hard uh, and we all go through things, but what can make it better is knowing that you're not the only one feeling that way, um, which is what I love that you, that's kind of what I feel like your podcast is, like you're letting people know like what you're feeling is you're not alone other people are feeling this. I feel this. hundred so, percent. Yeah. And it, it's one of those things that, and as much as I do it, you know, in terms of being an advocate for mental health, it was interesting that you said that because I remember, you know, soon after I had started this journey, uh, you know, I had an open conversation with some of my closest friends about, uh, the time that I was closest to suicide. You know, I was, I was in my car on the way to a, a gun store and, you know, I had that conversation and afterwards, uh, one of my friends who I view as someone who always like has had their, you know, things together, um, you know, just been someone who is solid, you know, never gets too high, never gets too low, you know, has always been, you know, relatively successful in life and, and after that time, he said to me, you know, Arnie, actually, I probably should have told you this, but I actually go to the th a therapist twice a month. And it was crazy because for me, it really humanized it because I'm looking at him. I'm like, this is someone I'm trying to emulate. He doesn't worry about things. He seems to always be in a good headspace, like always. And for him to come out and say that to me was really powerful because it was like, okay, like I'm not crazy. 
Like if he's dealing with this and, um, you know, he's seeing, you know, a therapist twice a month, like, okay. Like it's, it's just, we all keep these things private, but we all like not all of us, but a, a good amount of us go through, um, you know, mental health ups and downs. I don't want to put a focus on, um, like male versus female, but I know like just personally like with me and my, my, my friends, it's much less spoken about. You know, we don't, and I guess it depends on, on the friendships, but for a majority, you know, you talk about what, you know, what the Celtics did last night, talk about, you know, where you're going out to, you know, to, to the bar tomorrow night. You don't really talk about how you're doing. Right. And I think the pandemic though did a pretty good job on, on, of opening up those conversations um, because like, you know, one thing that happened to me just like a few, you know, with the last week or two weeks ago, you know, I went on a little road trip with my buddies and, and, you know, we started opening up and having some of those conversations, some deeper talks around how we're feeling, whether it's, you know, you know, whether it's, you know, wh how I feel like where we are right now in our lives or whatever it might be. And I feel like just as males, we don't have that conversation as much. Um, so I'm glad to hear at least, you know, you reach out to people that kind of have those conversations more often, but I don't know. I think that kind of just goes, goes along with having those more meaningful friendships that like we kind of talked to discuss in our, our episode last week. I agree hundred um, percent because, you know, I, it's something, and again, we're just talking about in generalities, but like females, you know, I, I, they tell each other everything. I mean, like, you know, in terms of like, you know, like, you know, if it's a guy they're dating or whatever, like they're so open with <laughs> everything, you know, usually for the most part, whereas for guys, we like, don't ever, you know, talk about like, uh, like, oh, cool. You're dating her. Nice. Good luck. Like, it's yeah. just like, you know what I mean? It's not like, oh, like, what did you guys do on your date? Like, how did you feel or anything? Yeah. And, you know, you're right. I mean, the, the, the interesting thing about you know, our culture, especially college to postgrad is, is so much of it is built on drinking. And in those areas of like, like, say, you, you know, the three of us are meeting up, right? A lot of the times it'll be for dinner or for drinks or like, you know, we're going to a bar. And in those situations, you really can't have you know, deep conversations when you're at a bar and there's a lot of loud music or loud people around you. And so that's another big thing that we don't do. And it was nice, you know, when the three of us met up, we met up for lunch and it was like, you know, we had, we got to have an actual dialogue on who we were, our past and, and stuff like that. And, you know, when you're only meeting up with your friends on like a Friday night or a Saturday night, it's not conducive to having these conversations, you know, you're not going to want to, when you're trying to, you know, get drunk and dance, like want to talk about, you know, <laughs> do you like your job or do you not, you know what I mean? Like, so I, I think being intentional about meeting at times, you know, if you can, without drinking, being a part of it, uh, maybe in the afternoon or, or things of that nature uh, can also be really powerful. Mm. I'm just so curious. Cause like, what you guys are saying about like how girls tell each other everything. I feel like, for example, like let's say my friend is, um, she just started dating a new guy. I will ask her so many questions. I'll be like, so how did like you feel? Like, how'd you feel on the date? Like, were you guys vibing well? Like, how was the conversation? I'll ask all the intricate questions about like how she's feeling. And I wonder if like, sometimes guys will be like, so like, it was good? Okay, cool. And that's like, like, I think it's how it really is. It's like, how, how was it? Oh, you had fun? What did you guys do? I got dinner? Nice, dude. That's awesome. Like, see, like, it's so funny because it's like, I, I, I sometimes will ask my friend, like, I don't even know what they did because all of my questions are focused on how did you feel? Like, did, was he like, did he make you feel good? Like, were you, were you happy? I'll be honest. I think with, with guys, like my guy friends, a lot, a lot more of the conversation goes like, like sexual things. Yeah. Just I, how it, how it tends is. to be. I don't know. I mean, that might also just be my my group of friends in particular, but I, I don't know. It just seems like it's that tends to be where the conversation goes sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. No, it, it's it's uh yeah, guy I, I feel like guys don't tend to go deeper than the general what did you do? 
did you like it? You think you'll see her again? Like that kind of, whereas mm -hmm. you get, and you guys will actually dive into like, <laughs> can you see a future? Like, can you, like yeah. stuff like that, yeah. you know? Yeah, no, definitely. I think, I think it's also different. Um, like based on your friendship too. Like I will only ask like, Oh, how are you feeling? Like if it's one of my closer friends, Whereas like, if it's a more like just acquaintance, I'll be like, oh, great. Like, what'd you guys do? Like, do you have fun? Um, simple things. But, mm -hmm. but in order to get to that closer friendship, like maybe that's kind of where we need to have the more intentional um, hangouts, like you're saying. So Definitely. I got to have those closer conversations because I was intentional about having those hangouts where I could. I wasn't at a club asking them this while we're like dancing. Yeah. Um, we're just like getting coffee or something so that I felt we could have this conversation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ah, interesting. Okay. Because it was it was I, interesting. I it was just interesting what you, you like because like John like John, what you had said was like we're just like the facts of the situation. Like where'd you guys go? Was it fun? Like that. And then Asia, you talked about the feelings. Guys would tend to almost always follow John's, you know, you, question. It's my question. As men, are we avoiding it? Is it avoidance or is it just that we don't think about it? Because I, to be honest, I think it's almost avoidance. I, I, I don't want to ask my friends that question. I don't want to know what their answer is. I don't want to. Really? It's, I just feel like it, it, will, it could even like, oh, we're all hanging out. Like maybe we're watching the game. Maybe we're really just hanging out, having a drink or something. If I'm like, oh, like how, like, like, how'd you feel? Like, how'd you make you feel? Like, what are your thoughts? It's just be like, dude, like, like back off. Like, it's, it's like, it's, it's almost like, a, like, uh, territorial, like I'm almost like infringing on like their territory kind of, kind of feeling. Huh. That's, that's what I, that's the way I, always, I feel about it. <laughs> and I just, the, I just think guys don't like to talk about feelings. It's, it's viewed as soft and it's viewed as like, you know, I, I you know, I don't want to know those, you know, kind of things about you and, you know, like my, one of my friends, um, in one of the friend groups I'm in recently went through a breakup and like all of us got like a, you know, like a one sentence summary. And I'm like, there's a person like he's dated for like four or five years. Like you, uh, we should probably be getting more than a, a one sentence summary on, Oh, like there was some issue and they couldn't see eye to eye. And so <laughs> they broke up. It was just like such, a, it was just like, okay. Interesting. I guess we're not going to dive into the weeds, but. Yeah, I've had that happen a couple of times. Wow. Um, wow. Wait, all right, I want to go back. There's one thing you said right at the beginning. It's probably the first line you said when we asked you, when I asked you why you decided to start the podcast, but you said, you, kind of, you told me about obviously, you, you know, your friend um, who committed suicide in 2019 and how, how, how what generally happens is you mourn and then everyone moves on, but how you wanted to kind of keep it yeah, I guess, or, or almost, I guess that idea, along with kind of your MBA class, you kind of found a problem to try to solve along those lines. I find that extremely intriguing because I don't think anyone, I don't think people recognize that that's what happens and happens far too often in these kind of times of trauma or in just in, I guess, in death in any aspect, right? No matter it's, whether it's an illness or whether it, or, or sorry, whether it's like a physical illness versus a mental illness or whatever that happens. Um, so I just wanted to tell you, I really love the fact that that's one of the reasons why you started your podcast. I really find that inspiring. It, it was interesting. One of the like things that I've realized is how little authentic conversations are put out into the public, you know, anytime. Mm -hmm. Right. So like anytime, you know, Giannis is being interviewed, right. He's being interviewed on his basketball game. It's a 15 minute conversation. And, you know, you know, we have the mutual friend, Danny, and, you know, she talked about her, her story of attempting suicide and her, her mental health journey afterwards, you know, and, and that blew up like that, that had like 500 plays on, on YouTube alone. And it was like, had all these random people hitting me up because literally there was no reference point of anyone talking about these things. Like, I, I'm sure if we go, I mean, I, I'd have to check on YouTube. I'm sure there's, you know, obviously YouTubers that have talked about it, but like for 500 people in my network or in her network combined, like 
didn't have a reference point of feeling like they, you know, had an authentic conversation of, a, you know, talking about attempting suicide or, or things of that nature. It, it shows you and that, you know, granted, that's a very deep conversation, but it, it's one of those things where it's like, we just don't have authentic conversations publicly. It's re just really not out there. Um, so much of us, you know, and, and it makes it makes sense. You know, we're so worried about our careers and looking perfect and, and things of that nature. We just hide these topics and we don't we don't talk about them. And that leads to because I don't want my work to, you know, fire me or uh, I don't want to get laid off that we don't talk about any of these things yet. All of us go through all of these things. There's just a huge disconnect. Uh, and, you know, I, I understand it because people have to worry about how they're making money and, and things of that nature. But that fear of what the repercussions of being authentic, uh, you know, it's, it's held back our society. I love, um, so very relatable, our last two episodes, we had a couple of people reach out to us and we're just saying how they were so, um, they really enjoyed the topic, right? Because it's, it's a topic that a lot of people aren't open to talking about, struggling to, to grow your friendship, find friends, maintain friendships at our age. A lot of people don't like to talk about. It's not something that they, they want to put out there that they have maybe had the confidence in discussing. So I, we had a lot of people or a couple of people always reach out to us that were saying, Hey, really, really enjoyed the, you know, the topic of the series, like really impressed by it. Glad, you know, happy that someone's, you know, putting out this authentic types of content um, around like, a topic of, of like friendship. So I very relatable. I think you're right. I think it's people don't feel, I don't know if they don't feel comfortable talking about it in public, whether it's for those reasons, whether it's because of a job or um, uh, because they might get laid off or it might be. I think it's, it's, it's like, they don't want other people's perception of them to change, honestly. Mm -hmm. What do you think? I think so too. It's like, I, I wouldn't want to, or like, it's not fun talking about like being lonely or it's not fun to talk about these things. Like I'd rather talk about something else, honestly, mm -hmm. um, something more fun. Um, and not bring down the whole mood of the environment with my, my problems. <laughs> Um, so I think it's like a bit of that, not wanting to be a burden to other people um, or not oh. bringing down the vibes. I got you. Being responsible for that. Yeah, yeah. And social media plays a huge part in that in terms of, you know, having the perfect social media account and l looking like you have the, the perfect lifestyle. You know, it was interesting, John, what you said and I, I don't know the exact facts, but I was looking at, I watched the Friends um, reunion episode, uh, the 25 year reunion, and Matthew Perry uh, dealt with, you know, alcoholism. And it was one of those things where he had worked with these, you know, five other individuals for, for 10 years straight. And they literally had no idea he was going through like they found out he uh, he came out towards the end of, uh, you know, what, like 2003, 2004. He started talking about it publicly on, you know, shows like Oprah. But like you're literally working with these people for 10 straight years. And none of them know that you're dealing with this thing. Yeah. It's just crazy. That really is wild to me that um, especially like for co-worker or I feel like sometimes co-workers I spend more time with them than my friends these days so my like family yeah they they know even more about me because they see me when I'm like getting to work and I'm like sleepy and they see me at my worst basically when you're frustrated when I'm frustrated with out. a project or something else but yeah that's wild to think that none of the none of the co-workers um and I, I think Matthew said like it, it's similar to what you said in terms of I didn't want to be a burden to others and, and things of that nature. And, and the coworkers were like, well, but that's our job as friends, you know, is to, to be there for you in the good and the bad. But, you know, obviously it was a totally different time period where, you know, I don't think he felt, you know, 
it was the you know comfortable you know I, I think being that vulnerable uh and opening up like that it, it's a tough you know personal thing that um he just didn't yeah i'd have been right. what well, we were talking about the you know the, the man thing and yeah not, not sharing feelings but um arnie so i got a question since you started the podcast um have you been having more of these conversations like in your own life with your friends more deeper conversations have you like just been going up to like some of your buddies and being like hey like how are you or like I, i'm just curious just for tips at this point honestly yeah i i have i you know i think the main thing is and and i think you guys have talked about this in the last two episodes but just being your authentic self right i think that's the biggest value of friendship is i can be who i am and you know and it's still tough but i've told my friends like when i text you or call you and i say how are you like if you're not good you can say i'm not good and i think that's been a real nice change cuz i've gotten the uh, i'm okay like and i'll be mm-hmm. and it's it's so refreshing because especially to what asia said like i, I i'm a i'm you know, I've done this myself where I'll just lie, you know, I'll just say, Oh, I'm good. You know, I'm not like, cause I don't want to burden someone with like, <laughs> you know, I'm not doing well. Like, um, yeah, maybe we should, you know, do a call. So, like, I don't want to do, I'm just like, Oh yeah, I'm good. Like summer's good. Like everything's good. Like, how are you? <laughs> it's just like, you know, and, and so I think that space of like, if things are not good, I think, my close friends, especially doing, given what I'm doing are now a lot more comfortable in being like, okay, actually, I'll just tell you how I'm actually feeling. And Mm -hmm. like, I won't feel like, you know, you'll judge me or you'll think I'm weak or something like that. Mm -hmm. No, I think that's very true, but just, um, when you allow yourself to be very authentic and vulnerable, it makes other people also feel like they can do that back. Um, And I think sometimes I forget just like, that is what friendships are for. It's to be able to go through life, not just the fun times, not just the nights out, but like actually go through life with these people. Um, And it's when we hold back the, all the sides of our lives, that's when you actually become more inauthentic because it's like they don't know what's going on in your life um and it's kind of like not being two-faced but it's just holding back on on very important parts of your life which is when you're not feeling your best because that can be a lot of your life where you're not feeling great because you're trying to get that promotion or you're trying to get through this this hard family problem or all these things that are going on I mean, it, it it's safe to say, and I'll, I'll admit this myself, I probably have never said outside when I've been texted, how are you doing? I have probably never said anything outside of I'm good, you know, unless I've been going through like a family death or something like that, unless like, and I, you know, and I admit it myself, like I probably have never, ever given, uh, I'm, you know, okay. I'm, I'm struggling with blank. Like I've never done that. It's right. only recently that I've, even now it's tough for me to do that, but like, I, it's only recently, I think now with having, you know, one of our mutual friends, um, you know, unfortunately pass away where I think that any of us have even been open to that response. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I feel like I think it's all the time. I was on that work. People are always like, Oh, Hey, how's it going? I say the same thing every time. And it is like, I say it and I want to throw up after. I'm like, ah, pretty good. Doing pretty good. How are you? Pretty good. How are you? Pretty good. I say it all. I'm like, "Uh, sometimes it's like people like like, at work, like people walk by so fast and we'll be like, hey, how are you? Then I'm like, they don't uh, don't uh." stop. So all I have time to say is like, I'm good. How are you? (laughs) Like, and I'm like running by to go do the next thing. So rather just didn't ask me. I know. Little waves, good enough. I should just be like, hi. I need to have a conversation. I don't know. 
but yeah hey how are you almost is like it just in, at least in this society it just implies like you just say you're good because then that's the only amount of time you have to answer usually when you're like in passing it hey okay i'm good <laughs> yeah just get a couple words out and exactly and 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 like i said like i I, i'm victim to it in terms of my friends texting i I, like i am safe to say prior to like starting this i don't think i've ever given a i'm not doing well i'll always say i'm good or like you know i'm tired from work or like something i won't ever say i'm struggling like i don't think i've Mm -hmm. ever said that in a text to a friend uh prior to to starting grateful living Wow. So in re- oh, there you go. I was going to say in regards to Grateful Living podcast, um, what is, because I only recently started listening to your episodes, but I know you have, how many episodes do you have now to date? I have probably, I think 65 interviews and, and then I've done like, you know, uh, random like life topics, probably close to 40 of them or something like that. I'm not sure. Wow. Yeah. So you, you, are you, you over 100 total, you think? I would say so. I would think so. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Um, I was going to ask, do you have a favorite episode that you, or a favorite interview maybe that stands out in your mind? Just to give our listeners kind of a, a insight on things that you talk about on your podcast. Yeah. So uh, I had an individual named Adam Burak talk about his alcohol addiction, uh, which was really powerful. Uh, uh, Danny's episode on attempting suicide at 14 and her mental health journey after that was quite powerful. Um, I had uh, one individual named Royale who uh, was a former drug dealer uh, who talked about that, which was uh, quite interesting. And then I would say uh, another one uh, was Anna Sweeney. Uh, she lost her mom uh, on 9-11. Uh, that was a very, uh, very interesting episode for me. Probably my toughest interview. Uh, the interview I was the most awkward in, the most pauses. Uh, that was just, you know, uh, you know, as I, I talk about, you know, authentic conversations, I mean, asking her questions about that day uh, and losing her mom was, you know, quite, uh, quite tough. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. And yeah. how, so how do you, how have you found these people to interview? Is it through mutual friends or because I think that you're having very vulnerable conversations and uh with people that maybe you don't know but like you clearly are able to have really good conversations as I've listened to a few of them already and make people feel very safe and comfortable and able to talk about these difficult experiences so are they friends or do you just kind of find people through social media or what yeah, no, it, it started out just being my personal network. Uh, Adam is, you know, somebody I went to high school with. Uh, he mm-hmm. he just, he reached out to me. I mean, obviously, as we've talked about, I had no idea he, had, he dealt with that. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, nobody is going to publicly, you know, talk about that on their personal Instagram or Facebook. So he, he reached out and said, listen, this is something I've been through. I think it could be powerful. Uh, and he, he's the one... You know, obviously Danny went to my high school too, but like, I, I, again, I didn't know that Danny dealt with those types of issues. I'm not sure how much Adam knew, but he basically said like, listen, Danny's dealt with, you know, some mental health issues before she has a lot of wisdom in this area. Uh, she, you know, she, he, he just, he re like, he, he kind of, um, created a group chat for us to see if, if Danny was open to it. Um, Anna went to my high school. I knew about her, you know, obviously there were, there were like five or six uh, families in Acton that lost people in nine 11. She was, you know, a year below me. So I knew uh, about her, her mom uh, for quite a while. And then uh, no Royale was introduced to me from uh, a guy named Jamal Eversley, who was also on the podcast. Uh, You know, Jamal, I interviewed him about his uh, art journey 
but he he knew Royale as a friend and as someone who dealt with like homelessness uh, and, and and things of that nature. So it all also gone through his mental health struggles, but now uh, owns a community center. So he has made quite a wow. uh, yeah quite a a turnaround in his life. Uh, so it was mostly you know either they've reached out to me or um, somewhat personal network and just remembering what things people have been through and then just being introduced a combination of all of those. That's awesome. Wow. I mean, that's a, I feel like interviews and like, I mean, I love listening to podcast shows where there's an interviewer interviewee. Cause I feel like it's just like you can hear people having such honest conversations. Sometimes in that one-on-one -on -one setting, it just makes it easier. Um, and then also just being able to share it with other people is so powerful. So I'm so glad that you you were able to make this podcast and are having great, not just great, but very honest conversations on it. So. No, I agree. I like the consistency of the interviewer and then like the changing new topic, like kind of new conversations yeah. that the interviewees bring. That's definitely, I think, that's something that I like with those types of podcasts. I think it's something that we, why we throw in some interviews here and there yeah. within our show, kind of keep it a little fresh. Mm -hmm. I, don't know, I mean, I think our viewers like us a lot, but I don't know if they uh, <laughs> wanted to just hear just me and AJ every just single week. Just us talking. So we also kind of have on, you know, um, uh, talented guests. I mean, I, I would say what you do is a talent, and not everybody can host a podcast, be consistent, upload, and do it all for a purpose. Um, so I do Thank consider you. what you do, uh, a, a talent, Arnie. Appreciate it. Um, I guess I just want to kind of just bring it back a little bit to the, you know, the, the topic of, of the series, though. How crucial of a role do you think friendships play on mental health? Like, obviously, it, having that person there, we talked about support systems. Um, did you, I don't know if you want to talk about that a little bit or dive into that. Topic. Yeah, I mean, I think they're crucial. Uh, I think, you know, being... You know, obviously, you know, for crazier situations, obviously, professionals should be obviously being seen therapists or, or things of that nature. But just in general, with, you know, everyday life ups and downs, you know, being able to go through life through the good times and the bad times and have someone you can authentically, you know, speak about different things with um right so I'll, I'll give an example like you know during my senior uh, my senior year i think one of my friends whose parents are divorced like we had a really uh you know really good conversation on you know the history of that and how it's affected him and it was something that we hadn't done even though i had known him since freshman year and so one of the things that happened two or three like years after after we had graduated is, you know, another stressful situation arose with his parents. And it was really nice for him to be able to then go to me because I had the back story of, you know, what he had told me and for him to just mm -hmm. process that. And mm -hmm. and one of the things, you know, especially what we've talked about, John, like in terms of men not showing their feelings is these things are affecting us. You know, it, whether we choose to talk about them or not it is a choice of our own, yep. but it's not like by not talking about it, it doesn't affect you. It's going to affect you. Uh, and, and being able to just process something with your friend and just be authentic with, you know, a situation it's just it provides it provides great support um and it's just it's just nice to get that out of your brain and 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 really just talk about it um and have someone where you you feel like you trust them and you can say these things mm -hmm. you know and you know i've had a couple friends you know come out as either gay or bi and and, and things of that nature and you know, for them to to be comfortable in you being one of the first ones to know, I mean, that feels amazing. I mean, it just it's one of those things where you're like, you know, because they would have been holding on to that. And it's nice to know 
you know, that someone's got your back and you've got their back and, you know, you're supporting them, you know, wholeheartedly. Mm -hmm. I like what you said there about, um, because like you had already had that backstory, it made him maybe a little bit more likely or more comfortable to already come to you since he didn't have to explain everything, the whole situation all over again, as he maybe had to with a therapist or like even somebody else. But just like, I feel like the friendships are there. Like, I appreciate my friendships that are there because I know that when things are not good, I do have people who know me who understand my situations where sometimes when I'm feeling bad I don't want to have to talk a ton to like explain the whole backstory at least I have people who already relatively know what's going on in my life so then when something does happen I can just talk about that one thing and not have to rewind the whole story yeah so it's almost like friendships are there as uh as like safety nets as well to have people who already kind of know the situation so but um, but yeah, thank you so much. I I guess my last question is, uh, if there's a or not a question or a request, um, one message if you'd like to leave with our audience, uh, what would that be? Whether it's advice or whether it's a call to action, anything like that. You know, I, I think one thing that we didn't talk about yet, but it was just you know being present is part of the equation. Yeah. You know, and that requires effort, you know, and, and, uh, you know, obviously with adult life, you know, responsibilities become more of a thing, but I, I'm always of the, of the thought process that, you know, if, if they mean enough, you'll put in the time, you'll, you know, you'll, you'll take the time to put in the effort. And, and so I think, um, you know, just being intentional about, trying to make that commitment. And, you know, again, I'm not a planner, but one of the things that I've tried to do is like, anytime I, I catch up with someone who lives like geographically far from me, you know, I'll say, all right, let's, let's put in our calendar, you know, two months from now, this date and time. So that even if life gets crazy, it's like, okay, it's on the cat. Like I, I found that that has been one of the, uh, really like not a life hack, but like, it's just been an easy way to actually keep in touch because things do, you know, and, and you forget, has it been one month since I caught up with them two months, three months, and then suddenly it's six months. So, you know, having the ability when you do catch up to actually at the end of that call, be like, all right, two months from now, we're setting this date. And if, if it doesn't work out, we can at least communicate that weekend. Um, I love that. And yeah. And I, I mean, as I've, I've said before, I think the biggest thing that you hope out of friendship is being your authentic self and them supporting you in that. I, I think that you don't want to be acting. You don't want to be faking when things are bad and, you know, like to just say, that they're bad. Like, you know, and, and I think that is really powerful. And I, I think I would just say like, you know, I, I would, if you can remind all your, your friends that you are there for them, no matter what, um, and, and knowing and telling them that you value them, you love them, they matter, you know, they make your life better, you know, ha having these, you know, I, I don't feel like it's tough for us to, to view ourselves and our self-worth like that, but yeah. hearing that said to you, it just kind of, okay, there, there is a purpose. There's a reason, um, you know, people love me. I make people's days better. You know, this person has my back. I have their back. Um, you know, just, I, I would just, you know, as, I, I mean, I didn't talk about this, but so in, in July of 2020, I actually lost another friend to suicide. And, and so then I started taking the Grateful Living stuff a lot more seriously. Um, you know, and, and again, 
in, in both of those situations, you know, with, with the March of 2019 person, I was in contact with them four months prior with the July of 2020 person. I was in contact with them two and a half months prior. Like one of the biggest regrets again, I have is first not telling them about my, my, you know, story. And then second, just n not reemphasizing to them. I am literally here no matter what. If I need it, you know, I will take, you know, a plane, you know, to where, like you, where you are in a pinch, like that, that's literally my level of commitment. Like you being on this earth is, is important. So, I mean, those are the, those are the two things is I, I would say effort and, 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 you know, being intentional with that. And then to just making sure you give people their flowers and, and making sure that they really understand their value. Uh, I think that, you know, I think you guys are in the working uh, professional world as well. It, it, you know, and, and the good thing is you two have each other, but like, I think one of the things that it, it gets lonely, you know, cause you're working so many, so many hours. Um, and then you're, you know, you're, as I said, you're meeting up in social contexts, usually with drinking involved, like it, it can get lonely. And so, you know, you never know where people are, despite how it might look on their Instagram profile. So just being intentional with them to say, if anything's going bad, like, please, I'm here. Um, our, well, what I will say for the short time that we've known each other, I know that if there, if I ever need someone to talk to, I got someone I can go to. Um, so I appreciate having you there. Same, Same goes so. back. You ever, yeah. you ever want to chat? You know, we're always around. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate that. 100%. Well, thank you so much for spending your Sunday afternoon on Toby Talk Pod. Um, and that wraps up our friendship series. If you have any feedback for us um, or want to talk to us more about these topics that we've been discussing on this series, we'd love to chat. Our DMs are always open. Our email is maybe in our podcast yeah. bio. <laughs> so in the bio, you'll have a uh, link for to connect with Arnie. You'll yeah. have all his contact information down there. You'll see our Instagram and our email as well. So yeah. um, we appreciate everyone tuning in to today's interview. Go check out the Grateful Living podcast. Yeah, uh, We'll have that linked as well. Um, and yeah, Arnie, thank you so much. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it.